Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander Moreira with Alpha Star Academy, and today we're going to be discussing the problem, the best lineup from the February 2025 USICO Silver Exam. In this problem, we are given a sequence of n values, and our goal is to print the lexicographically maximum monotonically decreasing subsequence after moving at most one element in the sequence to the left. Now, uh, I think this part makes sense. We were allowed to move a single element, but this series of five words can be quite tricky. It's quite a dense problem summary. So let's just take a moment to make sure we understand what these words mean. Lexographically maximum just means largest with respect to alphabetical ordering. So sequences with larger numbers in the front will be bigger than sequences with smaller numbers in the front. So we want as many large numbers in the front as possible. Monotonically decreasing means that each element is at most the value of the previous element. So it's allowed to be equal to the previous element. It just can't be bigger than the previous element. So you can think of monotonically decreasing as the same as not increasing. And then finally, a subsequence is simply a list obtained by just deleting elements from the sequence. So to make this all clear, let's take a look at some examples. Let's take a look at the example 4312. In this case, the best thing to do is to move the two one spot to the left, and then uh, what we'll notice is that the maximum monotonically decreasing subsequence is actually 4, 3, 2, 1, the entire sequence, because the entire sequence is monotonically decreasing. Each element is at most the previous element. So let's take a look at a harder example here. So if we have 6, 5, 4, 9, 2, 7, 1, 1, 3, it ends up being the best thing to do is to move the three two spaces to the left to get the sequence. Five, six, five, four, nine, two, seven, three, one, one. And the best or maximum monotonically decreasing subsequence here is nine, seven, three, one, one. So we delete the two and we delete the six, five, and four. Now, why is this the maximum monotonically decreasing subsequence? Well, we know we want it to start with nine because nine is the maximum element. So uh, we definitely want to start the sequence right here. And then we want to just grab sequence, uh, grab numbers in sort of descending order. So if we grab the two, that means we can't grab this seven, right? Because seven would be bigger than two. So we could grab nine, seven, and then the rest of it is decreasing from that point, so we can just grab the rest of the array. So we want to skip over the two, because if we grabbed the two, then we wouldn't allow, be allowed to add seven to our sequence, but seven is bigger than two, uh, so that is preferable. Now, um, note here that moving nine to the left, which is the number we want to start with, doesn't necessarily help us. And Let's try to move 9 all the way to the left and see what happens. In this case, we grab 9, but we still have to skip over 6, 5, and 4 because the next largest number is 7. So it doesn't help us uh, sort of add these values to our sequence um, because they're all smaller than 7 anyway. So all we've done here is reduced our sequence at this point to the monotonically decreasing subsequence 9, 7, 3. So all we've sort of achieved is losing out on the ones at the end here. So this is a smaller sequence than this sequence. So moving the 3 was a better choice than moving the 9. So this leads us to our primary key observation. We can only save elements which have at most one larger number to the left. So for example, six here simply can't be saved uh, because both nine and seven are bigger. Um, sorry, one number, one larger number to the right, I should say. Six here can't be saved because it has nine and seven to its right. So there's no way to make six a part of our sequence. So with this in mind, what kind of data structures come to mind? Well, a monotonic 
in particular a monotonically decreasing stack, I think is a very natural sort of idea for this problem. So if we sort of delete some of these uh, notes here, um, let's take a look at this sequence and see how we could recover the optimal sequence using this idea of a monotonic stack. So a monotonic stack is just a stack where you always add a number to the end of the stack if it is smaller than what's currently on the top of the stack. If it's bigger than what's currently on the top of the stack, then you're going to remove elements from the top of the stack until it's smaller. So let's suppose that our stack starts as empty and we take a look at six. So we're gonna add a six to our stack. There's nothing on it, so nothing can be smaller. Um, Great, so then we add a five. Five is smaller than six, so we add it to the stack. Four is smaller than five, so we add it to the stack. And then we want to add nine next. The problem is we can't add nine to the stack because that would violate the monotonic property of our stack. So we have to pop off elements off the top of our stack until we can add nine. So we delete four, still can't add nine, delete five, still can't add nine, delete six, and now we can add nine. The next element is gonna be a two here, and we add a two because two is smaller than nine, so we can add it. Then we go and see a seven next. We can't add seven to the stack because seven is bigger than two, so we pop off two but we don't need to delete nine because seven is smaller than nine, so we can add it to the stack. Then we move on to three, we can add three to the stack just fine, and then one is smaller than three, so we can add it, and one is at most one, so we can add it. And this gives us that monotonically decrease, or that maximum monotonically decreasing subsequence that we desired. So in terms of actually finding this sequence, once we've moved an element to the left, it's pretty straightforward. We just implement a monotonically decreasing stack and print out the value. The hard part of this question is determining the best element to move forward. And this all goes back to this idea of trying to find what is sort of the biggest element that has only sort of one larger element to its right and we wanna save that value. So one idea for, there's lots of different ways you could go about trying to preserve that element. Uh, one idea is to actually simulate this um, idea of a monotonic stack on the original sequence. So the sequence before we move any numbers, and then we can save sort of what was the most recently largest deleted number that didn't have two elements bigger to its right, and then we can sort of see if we can save those elements. So we're gonna take our code here and we're going to extend it so that we find the best element to move forward. And then we're going to um, simply run the process. We're gonna actually move that element to the correct place in the sequence. And then we run this monotonic stack algorithm one more time and print out that monotonic stack. So uh, we're gonna start by declaring B. This is just another copy of a monotonic stack. And this is going to be the monotonic stack generated by applying this algorithm to the original sequence. So the sequence before we move any elements to the left. And because we want to know both the element that we're trying to move and the position of the element we're trying to move. Uh, when we're adding things to this monotonic stack, we're going to store both a value and an index. So the index of the element in the array A. And uh, to store sort of the, the best element deleted or the maximum element deleted, we're gonna have this max deleted array and it's gonna store four values if it stores anything at all. Uh, so it'll store the value of the max deleted element. It'll store the position of the max deleted element, the value of the element that deleted it and the position of the element that deleted it. And note that we only want to store the max deleted element with only 
one element bigger to the right. So again, this is an important caveat here. Important, our algorithm should only store the maximum deleted element with at most one larger value to its right. Because anything with more than one larger value to its right simply can't be saved, so it's not worth trying to save it. So going on to uh, step two here, um, or sorry, uh, continuing on with step one, we're still trying to build this monotonic stack B. We're going to loop over the elements in A, the same thing that we were doing in this uh, step three. But before um, we do anything, we first want to see, should I clear out what is currently stored in max deleted? And the case where I want to clear out what's currently stored in max deleted is if I've found a new element bigger than what is already in max deleted. And the reason why I'd want to clear out max deleted in this case is because this would be the second number larger than max deleted to the right of the max deleted element. The first number larger was the number that deleted this element from the stack, and the second number I'm viewing right now. So if I see a second number larger than the maximum deleted element, I just set maximum deleted back to the empty array. There's nothing I can do to save these values. So I'll continue on here, and now we're going to see a line of code that is almost identical to the while loop from the monotonic stack algorithm. The only difference here is um, I'm recalling that my monotonic stack is actually storing pairs of values. So it's both storing the element from A and the index. So when I'm comparing it to the current value of AI, I want to grab the first value in the pair. So this will give me the element and I'll compare the current element in A to the current element at the end of the stack B. But um, this is just saying if A is bigger than the thing currently at the end of the stack, then I want to pop out elements from the stack until A becomes at most the element at the end of the stack. So uh, we're going to uh, store the element deleted. So pop just removes an element from the top of the stack B. And then we want to check is deleted. In particular, is the value of deleted bigger than any value I have deleted so far? If that is true, then I'm going to store um, in max deleted the new deleted element and the element and position of that element that deleted it. So this is saying array AI deleted the element, and this was from position I. Note that here we're using a greater than or equal sign because we want to store the minimum index of the max deleted element. So what I mean by that, we can see here, for example, um, when we added this, if we were to just add this three to the array, uh, so let's say our monotonic stack looks something like nine, seven, one, one. When I go to add three to this stack, I'm going to delete both of those copies of one in order to add three to the stack. I want to store the index of this first element because it is that first element that I want to move three to the left of when I eventually try to move this element three. So um, this equality sign is absolutely essential. The code won't work if you just do greater than. Um, so if we continue on here, we simply append B, uh, append to the end of B, the element AI. So remember, we've popped out enough of B to guarantee that we can add the element AI to the end. And then we store its position as well. So we are storing the pair element and position. And then finally, if max deleted is not empty, this means that we have to move some element forward that used to be in um, a worse position. So um, in particular, the element that we want to move forward is the element that deleted the max position. And the place we want to move it 
is to the position of the element it deleted, right? So we're going to move it right before the thing it deleted so that it no longer deletes that element. Um, so we just pop it out of where it's currently located and we insert it into the spot where the maximum deleted element is. So if we zoom out here, this gives us the entire code. Now, uh, there are probably several ways of finding the location of the best element to move. Um, you could probably do some clever uh, manipulations of sort of counting the elements with bigger or the number of elements bigger than each element to the left. Um, however, what I like about this algorithm is although the code is long, um, it is really just two copies of the same idea. So we generate a monotonic stack, we move an element, and then we generate another monotonic stack, and that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.